Hi there, I'm Sarah Miga, your go-to real estate expert and broker of Miga Homes Luxury Real Estate. If you're new here and interested in all things real estate, be sure to hit the subscribe button by clicking that little icon in the bottom right-hand corner of the video. I publish videos on a new real estate topic all the time and you don't wanna miss anything. With that being said, today's topic in my series, Inspection Pitfalls and Frequently Asked Questions, will discuss strategy following the home inspection and particularly, what are my options if the home inspection doesn't go well? Before we dive into available options, both as a home buyer and as a seller, let's set the stage. The home inspection is a detailed report covering just about everything from the foundation to the roof. As you can imagine, there are a significant amount of objects in between, many of which have been used countless times, like the bathroom sink, faucet for example. It's not uncommon for any of our homes to have a bathroom faucet in need of tightening or adjustment. Therefore, we stress to all of our buyers that every home, even those that are brand new, are bound to have items in need of adjustment or repair. However, there may be certain defects like building code violations, structural problems, or safety concerns that are important to take into consideration. Examples of these could be excessive radon, termite damage, a leaky roof, or significant damage to the plumbing systems. These defects are where we'll focus our efforts today as our buyers are likely to consider them deal breakers. When these issues arise, some home buyers may be weighing whether it's in their best interest to move forward with the transaction. They may have been dreaming about seeing their family in the home and these issues just weren't what they were anticipating. Similarly, sellers may be surprised hearing about the defects that were unknown to them despite the years that they've spent in the home. While home buyers also need to keep in mind the competitiveness of the current seller's market, sellers need to also consider the likelihood that any subsequent buyers may uncover the same defect and they may need to alter their seller's disclosures accordingly. Therefore, it's really important that we move forward not only with respect to the situation, but in a way that allows for both parties to come to the table and to get their needs met. After all, it's the goal of both sides to get to the closing table, is it not? Let's talk about the five available options after a significant issue arises from the home inspection. Withdraw the offer, accept the issues and move forward, negotiate repairs, negotiate concessions or adjust the purchase price, negotiate a repair escrow. Now let's cover option number one, withdraw the offer. This option is quite simple. As long as the contract remains within the inspection contingency timeframe, usually a five to seven day window after the contract is accepted, during which the buyer reserves the right to perform a home inspection, the buyer is contractually able to withdraw their offer due to the results of the home inspection. In Michigan, if in writing, a buyer notifies the seller that they wish to withdraw from the sale within that time frame, the buyer would be fully entitled to walk away and get their earnest deposit money back. As a reminder, an earnest money deposit is an amount of money you offer to the seller upon writing the offer to show them that you're moving forward in good faith. This amount is generally given at the time of signing an offer or within 48 hours of an accepted offer. It can be anywhere from 1% to 4% of the purchase price and will be used to go towards your down payment and closing costs. However, if you walk away from the sale because you and the seller are not able to come to terms or you just simply don't want to buy the house anymore, with just one document, the mutual release of purchase agreement, all parties can be on their separate ways and your earnest money return to you. Option number two, accept the issues and just move forward. Sometimes there'll be issues found at the home inspection that are not deal breakers for a purchaser, or they may be willing to take them on themselves after closing. Please keep in mind, there will always be issues identified at the home inspection because no home is perfect, even new construction. However, you as the buyer reserves the right to accept the responsibility of the issues at hand and to oversee repairs on their own time. If you choose this option, then you would simply let your buyer's agent know that there are no issues that you need addressed in order to purchase the property. This would generally be wrapped up by signing an addendum stating that you are satisfied with the home inspection and are removing that contingency to proceed with the sale. This allows the transaction to move forward promptly. Option number three negotiate repairs. If you are considering this option, generally you and your buyer's agent will go through the inspection report together and identify issues that you think are important to you. This would be things that you require to be addressed prior to closing. 
It is essentially like creating a small punch list of items you want the seller to remedy in order to move forward with the sale. One of the potential pitfalls of this approach is that in asking the seller to have the work completed, they can choose to hire whoever they want and you may not be satisfied with the work. In addition, depending on contractor availability, it may be difficult to find contractors to complete the work prior to closing, which could hold up or delay closing. So it is important that if you take this approach and you want something done in a particular way, you are very clear in your contract verbiage to avoid issues arising right before closing. For instance, if you find mold in the attic and you request that the seller hire a professional mold company to remediate the mold, it is important to specify whether or not you expect to have a transferable warranty with the completion of the remediation. Not all mold remediation companies warranty their work, and if there is an expectation of yours, you don't want to find out that after the work is done that there's no warranty available, because the addendum that you signed does not explicitly state that a warranty was to be provided. In that case, the seller would not be obligated because it was not written on the addendum. Furthermore, depending on what the request you ask for, if the seller is unsure of how much the request or repairs may cost, then they may also opt to ask for an additional time to get quotes for the requested repairs to make sure that they can actually afford to do what you're asking before deciding if they want to move forward or not. If this happens, it's perfectly acceptable for your buyer's agent to also work to get quotes for the work as well so that you have more than one bid. This typically happens for bigger issues like structural foundation concerns, water intrusion, mold, pests, bat removal, but of course, how the seller chooses to respond by either accepting, asking for more time to gather data, countering or declining your request is entirely up to them. Now, it is often a good idea to request that the seller hire a professional and licensed contractor for work to be completed and provide proof of completion prior to your final walkthrough, which happens within 48 hours of closing. Should the seller agree to make the repairs, your agent should be following up throughout the process to check on the completion of these items and send over any documentation promptly to avoid any last minute hiccups. Option number four, negotiate concessions. Concessions are generally given for two primary reasons. First, the buyer wants to choose their own contractors and handle the scope and timeline of the work to be completed. Or two, the seller either doesn't have the bandwidth, the contacts, or the desire to manage repairs, so they would prefer the buyer handle it all themselves after closing. So once you and your buyer's agent have identified issues that you want addressed in order to purchase the home, instead of asking the seller to make repairs prior to closing, you can request the seller give you concessions. Concessions are when the seller agrees to provide money out of their sale proceeds to go toward your closing costs and prepaid items. In this instance, whatever amount you and the seller agree to in concessions would be applied as a credit on your closing statement. This means that if you were to receive $5,000 in concessions, then at closing, $5,000 of the money you would need to bring to closing for your down payment and closing costs would come from the seller. This means if you needed to bring $20,000 to closing, you would now only need to bring $15,000. So with this option, the seller is not exactly writing you a check back, but instead you get to keep that $5,000 that they're subsidizing in your bank account instead of using it to go towards closing. So I'm sure you're wondering, how do you know how much in concessions to ask for based on the items you want repaired? Well, that's a great question with a few different options depending on your financial comfort level. The following scenarios would apply. You can ask for an arbitrary amount based on what you feel is fair, you can ask for an amount based on what you think the seller's likely to accept. You can do research online to get ranges of pricing. You can use a resource like Porch, which takes all the action items from the report and provides cost estimates based on national data. You or your agent can send over photos and or talk to local contractors to get ballpark quotes for the items needed to be repaired, or you or your agent can coordinate access to get in-person bids for a potential repair project. All of these options are acceptable. It just depends on how much information you need to feel comfortable moving forward with the home sale purchase. Especially if you have a bigger project or something unknown, getting quotes for the project can give you peace of mind that you're not in over your head before you even move in. It's important to note that some, but not all realtors will assist their clients with this process. However, at MIGA Homes, we firmly believe that it is our duty to assist our clients with gathering quotes through the home inspection process. 
scheduling contractors, and also collecting information that our buyers need to feel comfortable moving forward. If this is something that you're worried about, make sure your agent is well-connected and has reputable contractors that they can rely on to assist you with this process. Once the quotes are gathered, you'll have a better understanding of the scope and the cost of the project so that the two parties can discuss how they want to move forward. Although concessions are generally a good option, it is important to keep in mind that depending on the loan type and the purchaser's down payment, the seller is capped at how much money in concessions that they can contribute at closing. For instance, if you are getting a conventional mortgage and your down payment is less than 10%, the seller can only contribute up to 3% in concessions. If your down payment is 10 to 25%, the seller can contribute up to 6% in concessions. And if your down payment is more than 25%, the seller can contribute up to 9% in concessions. This is important to discuss with your loan officer because if the seller is open to this option and the repair is more expensive than what you can get in concessions, then you may need to also consider making an adjustment to the purchase price to compensate for the rest. However, keep in mind that if you lower the purchase price, this would also lower the amount of concessions you can get because it is a percentage of the purchase price. In addition, this method is not giving you all of the cash that you would need to complete the repair. So you would have to have that cash on hand to make up the difference between concession amount and the repair amount to get the work done after closing. If this is not something you're comfortable with or the work has a lot of unknown factors, then you should consider option five, negotiate a repair escrow. This option is primarily reserved for major issues that arise during the home buying process that both the buyer and seller agree need to be addressed. There are three primary reasons your agent would negotiate a repair escrow. Reason one, the seller does not have the cash available to complete the repair prior to closing. Reason two, concessions would not cover the full cost of the repair. Reason three, there is some unknown risk potential that the quote may not cover all costs and you want to protect your buyer from extra costs after closing. For example, at MIGA Homes recently, we had a property where we learned during the home inspection by doing a sewer scope that the sewer line had completely broken down at about 65 feet from the property. This was underneath the road. The plumbing company told us that they would not be able to repair the line because the damage was so great that it would definitely need replacement. So our team worked to get quotes from our, for our buyer from three different excavation companies to determine that the cheapest proposal was $22,000, with some of them being closer to the $30,000 range. In addition, upon reading through the contract, it stated that due to potential unknown issues that could arise once they break up the concrete and get underground, that there may be unexpected expenses. As a result, we negotiated that the seller were to escrow one and a half times the accepted quote, which meant that the title company would keep $33,000 of the seller's proceeds at closing. In order to do this, the lender required that the work be completed within 30 days after closing. So we also negotiated for the seller to put a $5,000 deposit down to secure the work so that it could be put on the calendar within 15 days of closing. That meant that our buyer had an additional $16,000 in escrow in the event the bill comes back much higher due to unforeseen circumstances once the work has commenced. This approach gave our buyer peace of mind to move forward and protected her from unknown burdens that may have otherwise been overlooked. This is just one example, and there are many ways to approach and navigate a repair escrow, but it is important that your buyer's agent be knowledgeable and discuss the requirements for doing a repair escrow with the title company, your lender, and you. While the best path forward after a home inspection is unique to each situation, it is my goal that our clients are fully aware of all their available options for negotiating any issues found in a home inspection. I hope I've given you a lot to think about and that you learned a lot from today's episode. Please subscribe to my channel today and tune into the next episode in this series, What is a City Inspection and Is It Always Required? As always, if you think you may wanna make a move in the next year, give me a call and set up a consultation today as I create custom moving plans for all of my clients up to a year in advance. And don't worry, if I'm not able to personally assist you, I'm well connected and can refer you to a similarly qualified agent anywhere in the world. In fact, if you haven't yet had a chance, please check out another one of my videos on why you should get a realtor referral for an agent when relocating. 
That will teach you all about how realtor to realtor referrals work and what to expect when you ask me for one. You can also check out my other series on my channel on relocation, selling a home, buying a home, new construction, downsizing, buying and selling simultaneously, and more. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.